You made it. You're finally here. Welcome to Half Cocktails, a place where we have a great time celebrating science, the social contract, and just plain old congeniality. Dare I say, a place where we seek a path to peace, prosperity, and exploration amongst the stars. What I'm talking about is an all-inclusive society, meaning if you're not on board with the understanding that we all agree to share rules, norms, and respect, we're not obligated to even consider your opinion anymore. Because the social contract is that important to a civil society. I'm your friend and host, Dan, the worshipping Dionysus man, sipping on some science today, welcoming any new listeners just joining us. We hope you're here to have a good time. I know that's what we're here to do. If everybody stays tuned to the end of the show, we're going to be talking about the easy trick florists are using to get out of parking tickets, and cops are furious. As always, I'm joined by some fine and fascinating guests in the lounge today. We've got uh, Amber, my sister, who loves that woo-woo and thinks she's mm. always right, too. Dear sister, how are you doing today? Oh, I've been moving all weekend. I am not sure I'm going to be very fascinating today. Oh, that's okay. I think you're fascinating every day, but that's more in a clinical sense. <laughs> Oh, is that good? Too, bro. Bad? Too. We're pulling out the big guns right away. <laughs> He's not holding Sorry. back today. Oh, and I also hear uh, Jamie Lynn, the druidist, who's just so damn good at this. How are you doing today, my love? I'm doing fantastic. Using all my fantasticness before I go to work. Oh, well, I'm glad yeah. you're giving it all to us. Well, I, well, I can't. You didn't even tee that up for me to insult you. What's going on here? Come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just Amber, too good at Amber's this. Amber's on top of it. Yeah, you're just too good. All right. Uh, we have a really fun and informative show for everyone today, brought to you by Happy Fun Ball by Global Chemical Limited, now with more unknown glowing substance. Mm. Hey. We're, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick look back at the death of Genghis Khan, everybody's favorite Khan, the Ooh. the OG Khan, the original Genghis. The OG. Uh, we've got some hot OG. science news. There's been a new study showing which groups show party show partisan leniency toward their own. We're gonna be looking at a uh, the fact that we could be facing another banana extinction. That's right. Another banana extinction. Wait, another what? one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know there was the a precipice. first one. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll talk I'm about really that too. They, they go together. <laughs> uh, and we're going to discuss the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs being a lot more rare than we realized. Huh. Huh. There's, there's some bullshit okay. and snake oil going on with energy bills in Louisiana. <laughs> Oh and, of course, we'll play Ooh. a rousing rendition of fact-checking time. It's going to involve beer, billionaires, and semen. So, as you can tell, <laughs> I really whew, teed up My a good favorite, one there. three favorite things. It's three favorite yeah, things, three right? Three favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, of course, we're going to wrap things up. I mean, up I don't drink this. beer, but I'm... <laughs> hey All grown oh. up now. uh, we're gonna wrap things up with a feel-good story about uh the newly negotiated drug price cuts for medicare that are gonna save six billion dollars for people for for people on the ground in the first year alone that's that's some amazing stuff we do encourage everyone time reach out to us at halfcocktails at gmail.com or maybe you want to text us a message at 443-499-8253. You could also call in and leave a voicemail. I'll allow it. Uh, hmm. Please don't hesitate to drop us a comment on one of our social media platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we're, we're, on, we're on some of them. We're, we're not on uh, <laughs> others that dare not be named. We uh, but might know how to use some of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not stuck in the 90s. You are. Uh, all right, we re- re- speaking of the 90s, we ready to start this shindig and hop in the time Woo-hoo. machine? Let's get in. Woo-hoo, let's go. Nothing would be better than a look at days of yester in our time machine. All right, Genghis motherfucking Khan. Uh, that's, I believe that was his given name. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> the he died. Uh, I think it was like August 18th, somewhere between August 18th and 25th in 1227. 
We we don't hmm. know because hmm. they they kind of kept a lot of the details secret. Now Genghis Khan I think they was well, oh yeah, yeah. We don't even know where he's buried today. It's all mm-hmm. it's all secret. They oh, wow. actually killed people that were yeah. like just walking down the road and saw the funeral procession. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Could you could you imagine no one's like, desecrating that you're, grave? You're chatting wow. with your neighbor, right? You're just you're, you're, you're foraging <laughs> yeah. for some vegetables. And, hey, yeah. look at those. Look at that. I wonder who that wonder funeral procession is for. It's pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Zing well, by you, would, you would think if they really wanted to hide him, they wouldn't have a big procession. <laughs> well, with all those countless needless deaths. Honestly, we Hello? don't know how big the procession is because they right, killed right. everybody. But well, it was at least big enough to <laughs> big enough to kill the people that saw it along the way, but not so big that entire cities would see it. <laughs> For being <Right>. scientific. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it was between these two sizes. Uh, so he grew the Mongol Empire. I think I think a really good argument p- could be made that uh, he's the greatest conqueror the earth has ever seen, not Alexander yes. the Great. Uh, no. I feel like, like Genghis Khan had it over him. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he almost yeah. united the entire European continent, Russia, mm-hmm. Mongolia, like all of that. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's really fascinating. I really suggest uh, the Dan Carlin hardcore history. He's mm. he does like six to twelve hours, so really long, in depth stuff on the Mongols and Genghis Khan. Uh, uh-huh. But the, mm. the the big recap yeah. is no one could fight like the Mongol horde. Yep, no one. Mm. It just just there was nobody like it. With the caveat being. Even even Mongols couldn't fight as good as the Mongol horde, and, and what what I mean by that is, those who grew up in the harsh steppe plains mm-hmm. were were untouchable warriors. Once Genghis mm-hmm. Khan had conquered cities and the Mongols inhabited them, the Mongols born and raised in those cities could couldn't not do anymore. fight like the Mongol horde mm-hmm. from the steppe. Isn't that crazy? And, it, suburbia well, kills you every time. Suburbia kills you every <laughs> damn time. Well, if the, the, and the the huge difference is is when you're living on the steppe, you're riding horses from birth. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. firing mm-hmm. you're firing bows and arrows mm-hmm. from the time you're three and four. It's like some of the earliest tools they were teaching right. them to use. They were literally giving their toddlers yeah. bow, tiny bow and arrows to start shooting. Right. So by the, the time you the, get yeah yeah. I was going to say they plus they they were nomadic, so you had a lot of self survival out on those steps. You took down your hut, you built it back up again. You don't do that so much in a city. Everything on horseback, move the whole town overnight, boom, boom, boom. So mm-hmm. if those that grew up on the step, and women included, by the way, this was not mm-hmm. just the men. Like everyone was expected to shoot their bow really, really expertly and ride a horse really expertly. So yeah. it it they had this whole society of people who could be riding in a full gallop and fire an arrow accurately, which if Ooh, you've ever ridden a shit. horse of full gallop is is amazing. <laughs> right, like, doing anything with accuracy, <laughs> riding that horse is a challenge. <laughs> challenge. <laughs> Just riding the horse is a challenge to me. Like, yeah, I don't know if I could getting ever on be the damn thing. Let go of the right. <laughs> yeah, it would so, be a production for sure. Genghis and his crew developed a tactic that uh, was effective all over the world, and it was the "Oh, you're winning! I'm going to run away" technique. And <laughs> the Mongols would fake that they were in distress and losing, and start to ride off. And then whoever they were fighting would start to chase them. At which point, sure, they they'd let them right. stretch out from the group, and then they just all turn around and start firing their bows from horseback, riding backwards now at the people chasing right. them, and just wow. decimate. Them. And still firing wow. their bows and arrows. Yeah, they just it's really just, phenomenal. They were really, yeah, it was really special. At one point, uh, uh, one of one of his generals was actually sent to Europe 
and had a couple battles there and and had great success but oh, wow. you know had to, had to go back they couldn't it was too far they couldn't get a toehold uh, mm-hmm. because of the distance yeah. anyway anyway so <laughs> over the years this guy Genghis Khan he builds this giant empire mm-hmm. takes over so much of the planet it's ridiculous apparently <laughs> i don't remember the percentage but the, a large percentage of people in the world today are, mm-hmm. are descended from him because everywhere yep. he went, oh, wow. he impregnated people. He personally. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's one yep. way to conquer the world. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, one, uh, yeah, it's estimated one in 200 men worldwide could be a direct descendant. <laughs> wow. There's some family history for you. That's, right. That's a lot. <laughs> that's yeah, a yeah. lot. Yeah. He really was prodigious. And then his kids were prodigious and then so on. So we, get Oh to yeah. It. Uh, the, the idea though, that if, like, so there's a point where Genghis Khan was fighting, uh, an uh, uprising in Western Shia. Um, the, the Mongols had been fighting them for more than 20 years. And, he went there to fight and died. Oof. We don't know. We don't know how history has given us a few different uh, ways that have floated around that pro- maybe, maybe probably misinformation. And the, but those classical methods were that uh, he fell off a horse while riding, huh. uh, which as, seems as a unlikely. Mongol, that, that, it, yeah, right. I mean, he was in his sixties. <laughs> he was older, but fall just straight falling off a horse. Uh, an arrow hit him in the leg, and he bled out. Mm. Uh, where, where were some of the other ones here? Uh, just yeah, the the arrow. In battle, uh, the horse riding. Uh, some people have said that uh, he captured a Tangut princess to take as a concubine, and she had a small dagger hidden on her and poisoned him uh, when when hmm. he went to 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 you know do his thing. Um, <laughs> what they did uh, <laughs> when, he, when he went to rape her? His, his Genghis Khan thing. Well, I mean, thing. I mean, I think we can assume it was probably rape. If she, well, but the legend said she did it in revenge for the destruction of her people. So well, we can assume it's probably rape. Yeah. Well, and I there's probably think, a lot of angry, angry ladies at that point. So I imagine so. I apologize for my euphemism. I didn't want to make the conversation <laughs> about how awful the world has been for women. From the dawn of time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's also a suggestion that it could have been plague, I believe. I think one well, of the plague and so fever or poisoning. A, huh. Let's not leave out one legend states he was struck by lightning during a storm. <laughs> okay. okay. Which is a pretty firm, if that happened, that's a pretty firm sign of the supernatural because some people, some Mongol legends attribute his death to a curse or even supernatural mm. intervention. Um, anyway. Yeah, that makes maybe sense. The, His whole life they thought was magical. Maybe right? he had the plague, which gave him a fever, because <laughs> she, and she stabbed him, which allowed the germs <laughs> to really take <laughs> Propagate. hold. And then he was out in the storm trying to get relief from the fever. Wow. Amber. <laughs> struck by lightning. I, I like love that. It. I mean, it could be. I'm going it could with be it. all of them. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, wow. There was a, a paper done in 2021 that ex- examined his death from a historic medical perspective, mm-hmm. and th- they 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 tried to do a complete reassessment of all available evidence, and oh. they say the most likely clinical scenario is bubonic plague. Oh, okay. Mm. That's where I've heard that. Yeah. Uh, the, right. the study was done a couple of years ago, uh, uh, but it, it looked at everything they possibly could. And basically what it comes down to is the Mongols were fighting the bubonic plague at the time. Jeez. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. There you and, go. Why, need to, why do you need to look to lightning? 
If, right. right? <laughs> um, Telling you. <laughs> and in, well, in, in the Mongolian culture, the king's corpses retained their divine power after death. So, mm. so they would, that's what, why they would bury them unmarked. Right. Highly that's protected, impractical places. Uh, right. Per- particularly where, uh, on mountainsides where they were thought to be closer to their final destination, heaven. Give it, you know, get, let's mm. give them a, let's mm. give them a better shot at getting <laughs> up there high. Extra, <laughs> extra boost. Uh, but they could they have cremated have to climb him. as far. <laughs> they also could have just put him in a pit in a field. Right. They, yeah. They, really, they, they could I mean, if they're trying to hide him, they're going to, you know, do something we wouldn't expect or they, the people wouldn't expect, right? Yeah. Boy, can you imagine if you were the one to find his That'd be trippy. resting area? That would be the coolest discovery. It'd be pretty damn freaking amazing. They they also rely. Kind of makes me want to go grab a shovel and, and <laughs> I think you're going to need more than a shovel, Amber. <laughs> I, <laughs> you know what? I've often wondered if like the local people don't know. They're just like, yeah, you don't get to know that if you're not Mongolian. One of us. You know, yeah. that actually, I forget what the thing is, but there's some great Mongol. Maybe it's their lineage or something. But there was some great records that only the true cons have or something. Do you know what I'm talking about, Dan? I don't know if it came up in any of your research, but there's like some oh, secret, secret stuff there, that they keep. There is. Yeah. They have a, their own written record. Yes. That only they get to look at that. That does exist. And as far as I know, historians right. don't have access to those. Right. Yeah. Hmm. No, they safeguard that. Uh, yeah. That's like you know, pretty Mongols. cool that, that they haven't like that somebody hasn't sold out already, you know, like in this work day and age where mm-hmm. everything is for sale, it's right. actually pretty cool that if they do have this knowledge and obviously they have some sort of hidden secret knowledge that they don't share with the world. It's pretty awesome that somebody hasn't like sold it to the highest bidder already that well, we know. Of. I, it's, it's only True. available to like the Royal lines. It's not, available right to, yeah i think it's open. purely through the cons so at this point it would be like oh yeah the vanderbilts have a diary they pass along to the male heirs right like of course mm-hmm. we're not going to see right. that <laughs> right but you know but the people okay. who need to will be able to but the, yeah the, right. those in the lineage all right anyhow i found it fascinating <laughs> that we got to a point where we can through medical texts like they were this this paper's fascinating they they went through uh like chinese physicians that worked with the Mm -hmm. mongols at the time they pieced it all together i will post put in the notes i want to read it link to that Mm -hmm. paper titled genghis khan's death an unsolvable riddle or simply a pandemic disease Interesting. Right. For now, we got to get back to a time yeah. where <laughs> the Mongols aren't in charge of the planet, clearly. <laughs> We'd have yeah, a lot I don't more know if it's a better place. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should just stay. Just stay. <laughs> no, Amber, we'll be pillaged. We'll be pillaged. Hey, I, oh, I for, for all the bad go. for all the bad <laughs> things that came with conquering, it should be noted Genghis Khan was very much a live and let live. Like, okay, you're mm-hmm. conquered, mm-hmm. I rule you now. But you, whatever religion you're doing, yeah, do that. Keep your religion, yeah. Every uh, keep doing what you were doing, right? But now you pay taxes to me. That's that. That's it. And I am going to take all your good looking women. <laughs> oh well, yeah, that that too, that too, <laughs> and maybe and a few of the it, even if too. only for a night, maybe. <laughs> if only just for gotta a sow night. those seeds. No big. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. mean, it anyway. really is a brilliant plan to conquer the world, right? So you mm. see, get to have fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's why the Mormons are like, keep having babies, and the Catholics are like, keep having babies. And the Muslims are like, keep having yeah. babies. Uh, you might not be wrong there. We laugh, mm-hmm. but yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not wrong. Yeah. There's That's some the truth. truth there. All right. Let's, 
Oh, uh, let's get back to a time where uh, women's sexual health and freedoms and liberties aren't taken for granted. Wait. Oh, shit. Oh, Wait. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Right, there's no How far into the future do you think we need to go? Uh, when, when when does the sun go, go Nova? Oh, geez. Mm, pretty, pretty I'll have to look far. that up in my other journal. <laughs> All right. Let's take some let's, time. Let's talk about some news. <laughs> it's time for some news. From our point of view, we'd even be glad if we could have a laugh or two. It's time for some news. So, a recent study published in American Politics Research looked to try and figure out how voters respond to politicians committing moral transgressions. That would be something oh, like, hmm. you know, adultery, fraud, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> deceit. Oh, transgression uh, of a moral nature. Uh, yes. You said moral transgressions, and I'm like, I don't think there is a transgression that is moral, but you mean transgressions oh. against morals. Yes. 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 See, my brain yes. is He's always working. Right. <laughs> no, that sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> I mean, I am pretty always, I am always right. Uh, I mean, <laughs> so the, anyway, uh, the, the two authors oh goodness, of the sorry. paper, which was called, what, what was the paper called? Uh, Partisan Differences in Voters' Desire for Punishment in Response to Politicians' Moral Transgressions, authored by a guy named David mm-hmm. Redlosk and Anne-Marie Walter. Mm-hmm. Uh To quote them, we began with studies in the U.S. that examined whether the moral foundations people hold influenced their emotional responses to transgressive politicians. We found that while Hmm. deeply held moral values do anchor some level of emotional response, partisanship seems to play a stronger role. Moral foundations seem to be malleable rather than foundationable when partisanship is involved. The latest paper wow. expands this work by looking at a different outcome, the desire to punish politicians for moral transgression. Where our focus on emotions is about how voters feel, this paper looks at what action or punishment voters believe should be taken against such politicians. We, d- we measure desire oh. to punish with a set of potential mm-hmm. actions that might be taken from requiring an apology to restoring damage caused, getting a warning from a party leader, and being reported to authorities to being removed from office. So wow. they did this study. Uh, uh-huh. they car- and what they, they find? They, they, they carried the study out on the last month of the 2020 U.S. presidential election. The example, Oof. they got th- 2,997 people. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. Now, That's each a lot person of people. got a, randomly assigned a short vignette describing a fictional scenario, uh, but realistic, where a politician commits a moral transgression uh they they were Mm -hmm. based on the moral foundations theory that that outlines the five moral principles care fairness loyalty authority and sanctity uh they added a social norm violation to uh for a baseline comparison and then they also varied in terms of the politicians partisan label some being democrats some being republicans some having no party affiliate huh okay so the transgressions, they included mocking a constituent with mental health issues, which is a care Oof. violation, uh, giving a job preference to supporters, a fairness violation, praising mm-hmm. a neighboring town over the other, loyalty violation, disregarding safety regulations during mm. a disaster, an authority violation, engaging in a sexual relationship with a teenager, wow. a sanctity violation, the social norm violation <laughs> called a uh, politician carrying briefing papers in a plastic grocery bag. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god. Then everybody scored it on their scale and they the results showed that Republican and Democratic voters differ in their desire to punish politicians <laughs> for moral transgressions. Yeah. When, really big surprise. When the perceived severity of a moral violation was low, Republicans exhibited a stronger desire to punish than Democrats. However, this punitive wow. desire was significantly reduced if the transgressor was a member of their own party. 
Wow. Uh, like, we all know this, but fuck. Still. In contrast, That's Democratic just... voters demonstrated a higher overall desire to punish politicians for moral violations, particularly when the perceived severity was moderate to high. Notably, hmm. Democrats did not show an in-party bias. Their punitive responses were consistent regardless Ooh. of the party's affiliation. And this Ooh. has been hmm. a big problem we've, we've been seeing playing out yep. live over the past decade. From yeah. mm-hmm. you remember Mitch Mitch McConnell saying we can't do a mm-hmm. Supreme Court justice in an election year when it was a Democratic president when it was Republican yeah. all of a sudden it was like well we got a it's duty to do our job we could yeah their values and everybody shift. was like yeah do it mm-hmm. their values wow. shift with the moment and they shift with the details uh. they have no concrete values and all they do is talk about how they're the party of concrete values and Amber. I was surprised to learn that uh, uh, our our brother David, who is very right wing, uh, was against Trump. But hmm. it, really? it occurred to me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty early on, uh, uh, somebody was telling me they were looking I had at no media. idea. Yeah, and I I think it's because he he actually understands the values and tries to uphold the the conservative mm-hmm. values. And these moral values, he's tracked, right. at least publicly. And mm-hmm. he saw right away that this guy, doesn't matter that he's Republican. This guy goes against all of the moral values yeah. that he got ingrained <laughs> right. in. Right. 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 Like, right. The supposed moral values. Apparently it doesn't matter if it's if the it's same team. It's like, oh, well, I mean, he can grab him by the pussy. It's okay. It's okay. Right. It's okay. Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, it's okay we've all see. we've all kind of known it, mm-hmm. but now we have actual data to back it up. And in, that's crazy. If mm-hmm. you're Republican listening, I do hope you will start to see how valuable actual concrete values are, how necessary it is, yeah. and how it, it it hurts you too. It hurts you, Republicans, right. mm-hmm. to be this way. It's hurting it really you. Does. Yeah, because you end up with bad leaders. Because you're not applying <laughs> yeah. principles fairly yeah. and evenly. That's yep. some crazy, <clears throat> crazy stuff. I just, <laughs> I want to believe there are, there, and there are, there absolutely are. It's, you can't throw down a blanket statement, but in this day and age, right. we're seeing way too many that are like, yep, mm-hmm. I don't care that he cheated on his wife while she was pregnant. <laughs> He's great. Yeah. Sent by God. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure Christians Never aspire to that. And if a Democratic person did that, that wasn't related right. to their party. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah they'd see right it's through just it. just bonkers. Really upsetting. Well, it is, but there's nothing that we, we can do about it uh, other than. Right. Vote. We can vote. Keep, we can vote. We can vote. We can encourage people to really see, like, what are your values? What do you believe yeah, have in? A, what have do a, you right, do? A calm conversation Would you about it. Cheat yeah. on your spouse who's pregnant. Would you speak about women the way that he does, they do? Like, if you wouldn't do that, then why do you vote? And why do you allow it in another that? who's a leader? Right. Got to own that making rules for our children. Who would? Because right. I really do feel like most yeah. of the Trump supporters wouldn't actually act like him. I mean, no. some definitely well, do. Some definitely we, do. We see the ones there's... that do because it gets the traction. Right. Yeah. The ones right. that are normal people, we, we don't we don't see them. They don't go viral being weird. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. And like if they would just think, put a little bit of thought into it, I think that they would realize that they're not supporting the best person. Yeah. Well, no. I don't know. I also I feel like – in our echo chamber society, and this is not mm-hmm. just uh, the Republicans, uh, there's a lot of people that can't speak up and say they're voting against Trump. They can't. Right. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. The echo, You'd be ostracized out of your community. Them. They'll get mm-hmm. destroyed. Right. They have family and community that they need to exist with. That's it's the real problem with the with the echo chambers. Yeah. And same thing. It's like true. if. If I hopped on Facebook and was like, hey, y'all, I changed my mind. I really like I think Trump's the best fit for the country. How many of my <laughs> lefty friends would <laughs> immediately mm-hmm. go on you? the attack? 
But that would be the correct thing to do because we all know what a train wreck, a misogynistic <laughs> ass hat he is. Right. So I'm just going to say we, you proved your own point. Right? It wouldn't be We're the not best way to persuade you, your sanity. Well, possibly. I have oh, to no, put some thought into that one. We would stage an intervention, Dan. We would stage an intervention. Don't worry. All we right, won't let right. you go down that all path, right. Dan. It's okay. Right. We we know okay. it would be a sign Let's... that something has happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, let's move on. Let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about a different kind of bananas. Uh, yes. <laughs> Another kind of banana. We've got a big problem. So what is banana lovers have a big okay. big problem uh, globally? <laughs> Sounds like it should be a joke in there. <laughs> I know, right? But it's 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 all too real. It's not funny. Uh, globally, we eat about. 273 million bananas a day. That's, That's a crazy. lot of bananas. Um, that is insane. <laughs> while there are about a thousand or so varieties of banana, the Cavendish banana makes up about half of global mm. production and consumption. So odds are, Ooh. if you go to the grocery store, buy bananas, you're getting a Cavendish banana. There's types um, of bananas? You're yes. blowing my mind, Dan. Uh, Elizabeth fact, and, and I, I were just talking about this yesterday. My daughter and I were talking about bananas and banana flavoring because she was talking about a a drink at a local place here, a cocktail that makes a really yummy banana flavored whiskey drink. So, oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. But maybe they won't be able to much longer. Who knows? Uh, maybe no. The well, artificial banana will be all we'll know. Um, there's right. a fungus. Uh, oh, in in the fifties, there was a fungus in the fifties, mm. and actually, Dad told me about this when I was a kid, Amber. Uh, because the yeah, the bananas he ate as a kid, he said that they were gone, and that the bananas we eat now are a different mm. kind of banana, and that I would really love the original bananas before the fungus killed them off. It Did was, you poo poo them and say that was just an old man? Reminisce. That's an old man's tale. No, I believed him. I was uh, I was a kid. I believed everything my dad said. Why do you, why do you think I was a Republican <laughs> in my early 20s? Right? <laughs> it's okay. We all were. <laughs> no, we weren't. <laughs> Not all of us. Well. The, the Lisa Klan. <laughs> anyway, bananas, had to be, fungus. Lisa Klan was its own echo chamber. You had to be Oh, for sure. Believe oh. me. <laughs> you get attacked. Yes. <laughs> when you start <laughs> going against the family yeah, sorry line. Sorry about that. And, and sorry you, about that. It was never from you. <laughs> it was never from you. Anyway, uh, the no, Gross Michael banana was, banana was anyway, the one in, in the 50s. Gross Michael. Gross, G-R-O-S, huh. Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L. Uh, uh, the Fusarium mm -hmm. oxyporum mm -hmm. fungus brought it to its knees and... They found that wow. the Cavendish banana was resistant to the, the fungus. So they switched over to the, the Cavendish. Well, now hmm. that same Fusarium oxysporum uh -oh. fungus is back, but in a far more oh, no. virulent strain called the TR4 Oof. strain. And it's already been found in banana plantations in Asia, Australia, Africa, Damn. and no. South America. Latin America. And they haven't figured out a way to fight it yet? If it was from no. the 50s, you would think they'd be fighting no. it. Uh, the original fungus was from the 50s. Yeah, you would. You would. And 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 that's that's why they're like, well, may maybe we can stop it this time. Right? We know we know a lot more. We, right? we know we've been studying this, well, this fungus, hope. right? Um, but uh, they they don't actually, I mean, there's no, it's any like any outbreak, there's no guarantee they can they can succeed. Um, at least the banana trees can't right, right. deny hmm. the vaccine. Hmm. <laughs> I see what you did there. Well played, Lisa. Well played. Uh, <laughs> You're getting it, whether you like it or not. <laughs> the the well done. real problem is, is there's no straightforward path to uh, something like a vaccine. Um, they right. can they can develop things to interrupt how the fungus is breeding, right? They can, they can uh -huh. like, like they want to develop a, a nitrous oxide scavenger 
to to neutralize yeah. the burst of nitrous oxide that the fungus puts out that hurts the tree. So like huh. the, maybe mm-hmm. then the tree can just live with the infection and not be killed by it. Uh, mm-hmm. They want to try and they we want to look into the molecular mechanisms of the fungus to, to, mm-hmm. to try and disrupt that. Uh, they've, they've got all sorts of avenues we can take, but they don't know if any of them will be done in time or be effective enough to save it. Because wow. the fungus, so- the fungus just persists in the soil. It's just so hard to get rid Damn. of. Damn. Wow. Yeah. So they're trying to so quarantine. So what does that mean? Like, if they can't quarantine it, if they can't control it, do we yeah, just right, not have Yeah, right now it's a small problem. More? But or if this there grows... there another... Mm-hmm. There's thousands of varieties. We don't know what we'll end up with. But bananas as we know right. it would change completely again, huh. 70 years later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So we'll yeah. be telling our not children. Remember in the good old days, this was the banana. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> bananas I had as a kid Back were great. Your bananas. <laughs> that wasn't we'll get, even a real banana. <laughs> maybe we'll a, get better bananas. Banana cocktails in my day <laughs> had real banana flavor. <laughs> All right, let's, real uh, banana. Let's, Let's wrap up news real quick. Uh, I, I wanted wow. to mention the asteroid that was responsible for wiping yes. out the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. Researchers Ooh. from Europe and the U.S. have discovered that it formed beyond the orbit of Jupiter in an extremely cold hmm. region rich in water and carbon. They published these findings Thursday in the Journal of Science. Uh, mm-hmm. It was a very, very wet, water-rich asteroid, almost like a giant mud bowl. Mm-hmm. And huh. mm-hmm. asteroids that are formed in our solar system are very dry. Okay. Okay. Did not know that. So, Didn't either. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, they, the, the, yeah, the researchers managed to... to what were they down in the Yucatan Peninsula? Um, mm-hmm. They they couldn't study a direct sample of the asteroid because it you know destroyed, but they it's did <laughs> find a way to examine the dust from the impact. So, mm-hmm. using using the layers of rock, they were able to be like, okay, okay, no, this is the dust from the asteroid. Damn, and wow. So, not only did it. Did it kill? Here, here, this is the crazy part. In the past 500 million years, they have not found another water rich asteroid. This is the only water rich asteroid to have hit the Earth. What? Wow. And they have yeah. to be forming out there, right? That's this crazy. They know they to find us. They just, huh. I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense Ooh. in that the asteroids that form in this solar system are much more likely to hit us, right? The right. odds of something right. from a right. distant thing, it's the, the spaces are so vast, you know, yeah. Yeah. like, it, you know, shooting at something, f- the further away it is, the harder it is to hit. We all know that instinctively. Exactly. So think of it like, mm-hmm. like that, like it, it's really hard to hit us from, from so far away. So the fact that this giant mud ball did hit us and it was the one that just wiped out the dinosaurs is fascinating to me. Just phenomenal. That's crazy. So had it not found us, dinosaurs would be ruling the world. Yeah. 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 I mean, if ever. we'd be living with them. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) (laughs) We certainly wouldn't have the the technology we have. We would have underground hiding from dino technology. (laughs) But maybe they would be our friends. Maybe we would have domesticated. Have you seen the teeth and claws on these things, Amber? Amber? I think it's more likely they would have domesticated us. <laughs> As their food source. Totally what happened. Yeah, There'd we would be the little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're the little pets that they eat one every Christmas. <laughs> oh, this one's cute. Maybe we could keep it as a pet. Don't name it. <laughs> we'll pardon this one. You're going to get too attached. Yeah, don't name our food. <laughs> <laughs> totally. All no. right, all right. Let's uh, let's let's talk about some snake oil. Snake oil and bullshit. Hopefully, right. oh, snake oil. <laughs> always. Oh, 
on sale for me Nothing but snake oil And it ain't free Okay, so strange things are afoot in Louisiana. Uh, story. You don't say it's a Bigfoot. Sasquatch. I wish. The Jersey Devil. I wish. No, that's B. That would say. It'd be a lot more fun if somebody was like selling fake Sasquatch hair or something. Uh, no. No. Uh, oh, they probably are, idea. but. Business idea. So there's a new statewide energy efficiency program that they're doing there to try and get houses and homes more efficient appliances and windows and, mm-hmm. and things to mm-hmm. save on their energy bills, right? So they're using less electricity. Um, okay, valid goal. Sounds it's, great. It's, it's a similar yeah. to many such programs. I know Nevada has one we took advantage of to get a Solar. smart thermostat. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, they, that they, thing, yeah. Yeah, they just came in for free, gave us a $200 thermostat. And then, like peak hours, nice. they'll they'll take <laughs> they control, control it. Um, huh. I we, we'll eventually. When, I'm going to get out of that plan, especially when all our solar's up. But anyway, <laughs> Not great when you're uh, menopausal. <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> Why is it so hot oh. here? Um, oh, uh, it's oh, a, yeah. it's a it's a great idea though, because if, if peak usage, if everybody can just one or two degrees hotter, it puts way less of a strain mm-hmm. on the energy grid. Right. Well, um, yes. <laughs> it seems that uh, the state regulators are being pushed by the electric utilities, and it, it seems like they've got a really good Uh-oh. chance of succeeding in adopting Oopsie. rules that will add a fee to not only to, to, to make up for the lost expenditures from being more mm-hmm. energy efficient, meaning they're saying, look, mm. Dan's spending $100 a month on electricity. You give him these mm-hmm. energy efficient mm-hmm. appliances. Now he's only spending 65 We just lost $35 a month. Uh-huh. So we would like uh-huh. fees uh-huh. to make that up. And this uh-huh. is, is, is what they're, uh-huh. what they're developing. Oh, what a scam. Yeah. And, I hate this and shit. This, horrible. They're also adding another fee. So that everyone else pays for the energy efficient stuff. Fuck off. Like they're going to amortize everybody's efficient oven over everybody's electric bill. So they don't have to pay anything. Fuck. And then they make, and then they make the same money selling less power. Yeah. Yeah. Strange things are in Louisiana. So government. (laughs) This is why local politics matters. Vote, vote, vote. Yes. Seriously. Get out that, that fucking vote. That's awful. just ridiculous. Awful. And it's it's interesting to me, and I'm going to go on a little bit of a diatribe here because it, there are certain politicians out there <laughs> saying that we have to have kids and babies. Okay, mm-hmm. great. You think we should all have kids and babies, and if you don't, you're not contributing. You shouldn't have a vote and all this stuff. You do have kids and babies, and they're going to inherit the earth. And what are you leaving mm-hmm. them? boggles my freaking mind that we can have somebody out there saying never abort bring up all your babies everyone babies and then let's leave them a shit shit mm-hmm. earth i don't care mm-hmm. my children are gonna have lots of money until they die because we're apocalyptic and uh so annoying you, you know, would think these guys I, would be going for a better future you think i honestly think that that's you know, like they just can't look that far in the future they're so I think they just want more money and focused on yeah. Well, I mean that too, but they're just so focused. When is on enough what's money best enough for them that they don't care yeah. what's going on with anybody else? For instance, Elon Musk wants to populate the world. He's got how many children, illegitimate children, whatever the fuck is going on with him. He's got all the money to make all this better, and the best he could do right now is make yeah, a right? bunker in some island somewhere. Really. I, I just don't get it. One. There, you know, like, there no. are so many billionaires in this world that could, if they would just give just you know, a kids would be better off. little bit, the whole Le- world yeah. would be it's better. A, it's a bit of a tangent, yep. but legit, like Elon Musk is a good example. He started testosterone replacement therapy. Oh, Jesus. As a rich man. After wow. he did Tesla, like you, we, all, we all saw the switch. 
We all saw Elon mm-hmm. Musk go from a guy like, hey, guys, our planet's in trouble, to this we weird fucking right. cult of Elon guy. What happened? He started mm-hmm. testosterone right. replacement therapy. He went through a second puberty and just started yeah. banging everyone who was willing and, and had to come and up with a way to justify that. So in his head, oh, no, yeah. I'm doing this because I'm a morally mm-hmm. righteous person. That's, that's my image and identity. Yeah, well, if you so, were, you would save their planet. Right. Well, that used to be where he was right. at before just he propagate. had second puberty. Yeah. Uh, and that's he's not the only interesting. one. Interesting. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, it's it's a, it's a legit thing. It's a legit thing. As, as a man Damn, in his no 40s idea. whose testosterone is declining, like, I understand the desire. Oh, you're fine, baby. Right. You're fine. No, absolutely. Get the desire. But it's yeah. interesting how mm-hmm. it's affecting, affecting oh, them. That testosterone, it's the energy level. Like, you're talking about with, with menopause, darling. Like, your energy goes down. Yeah, I know. And it's like, I used to have all this yeah. energy. Well, mm-hmm. if I had... TRT, Mm -hmm. you know, the testosterone replacement therapy, all boom, it would all be back. I'd be like a teenager again, literally the the energy levels of a teenager again. However, also the (laughs) moody, angsty, emotional teenager. Right? I wish. No, no. I'd love to have some of my energy from back then, even with the angsty shit. I don't know. (laughs) All right. Okay, (laughs) let's let's keep the train moving. We got to get... To some fact check in time. Is can we do some fact check in time? I think it's time we do some fact check in time. We can I do some fact check in time. time. I think we better get it done. Also, right. guys, clap your hands, do whatever. Dan, I gotta I gotta start getting ready for work. Amber, I'm so sorry. I didn't plan this, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Poncho Cat is definitely looking at you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jamie Lynn hopping off again right before fact check in time. I see I see you how know, you are. Oh, it's a thing. Uh-huh. I see how you are. <laughs> I have right. to have stand up soon too. too. I have a bed being delivered, so whatever. Oh, but you go get ready for work. Fact <laughs> 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 checking time. It's fact checking time. Cross my heart and hope to die. Stick a needle in my eye. Here's the proof that all the kids call fact checking time. All right, welcome to Fact Checking Time, the new show quiz that tests your ability to tell the difference between a news story, something that happened on the internet, and something that the media actually deemed worthy of a true fact check. Uh, we're here in the Half Cocktails Lounge with Amber in the hot seat today. Amber, you're playing for Poncho Cat, the co-host of Half Cocktails New Shorts. And whether it you win or lose decides warm. if he gets wet or dry food for dinner tonight. So let's get to the game. All I'm right, going to present to you a series of events and stories that were in the news or on social media, on the internet in some way, but only one of them has been fact-checked. These might be articles. They might be social media posts. They might be television Ooh. interview quotes. They might be magazine interview quotes. They might be interview quotes, but only some of them were fact-checked. You're going to have one minute to ask me questions about the story. Are you ready to go? Let's do this. I don't know if I'm ready or not, but... All right. Either a mayor in Georgia was stashing booze in a ditch for the state prison work crew to drink. Or there's a pub in Lincolnshire, England that sells a beer called Osama Bin Lager. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god you're one minute begins and which now. one of these was fact checked um okay how long have they been selling this long yeah they started three months ago okay mm. and where was the the mayor and the alcohol in the ditch again what location that was a town, uh, Thompson, Georgia, small Georgia town. Thompson, Georgia. Um. Okay. F- as far as which would be fact checked, I think they're going to fact check the logger. Osama, Osama bin Logger. Mm-hmm. That is correct. Woo-hoo! In Lincolnshire, England, that was Snopes fact checked it, and uh, it's true. Nice. They do, they do sell Osama bin Logger. Hilarious. 
Uh, I might have to start with, drinking beer. Right? It's got a little cartoon That's caricature funny. of him on the, on the beer keg and the beer tap. That's really clever. <laughs> right? Oh, <funny. laughs> um, So, Georgia guy, was he really hiding? Like, do we know? Yes. It was just a story. Georgia <laughs> Mayor <laughs> Benjamin Benji Cranford indicted on last uh, Wednesday and arrested by Georgia Bureau, Good old Bureau of Investigation Agents. Yeah. He drove to the store, <laughs> bought a bottle of Seagram's <laughs> gin, and then left it in a ditch <laughs> where the work crew prisoners oh, were going to find it. What a uh, nut they- job. That's <laughs> hilarious. I mean, why? Is- why do we have all this sudden so interest yeah. in working on the work crews? I don't know, boss. Right. Like all of a sudden they have more people applying. (laughs) All right. So one. I want to go on the work crew. All right. Woohoo. One down. Next question. Uh, Either researchers estimate that if the top 1% of Americans paid the full amount of taxes they owed, it would raise $175 billion a year. Or Mm -hmm. Warren Buffett talking about class warfare said. It's my class, the rich class, making war, and we're winning. Which got fact-checked? Got it. Oh, they're both so true. Um, hmm, which one would be fact-checked? When did Warren Buffett say that quote? Uh, 2006. An article in the New York Times. He was he was being interviewed by actor and economist Ben Stein from Win Ben mm. Stein's Money. I remember who Ben Stein is. Yes. Okay, Warren Buffett. And what was the other one again? Uh, the same the, issue. Sorry. Top one percent of Americans actually paid the full oh, amount of taxes right. they right. owed. It would bring in an extra one hundred seventy-five billion dollars a year. Okay. I am going to 12 seconds. say that they fact checked the Warren Buffett story. That is correct. That is correct. <gasps> two for two. Oh Poncho. my gosh. She's already so got so much pressure this game. I swear. Um, bonus points. Was it t- true, false, or mixed? I'm going to say, really say that. I'm going to say true. It is true. Uh, but, and the context, uh, Buffett was asking, how can this be fair? How can this be right? Buffett wasn't bragging. Right. My class is winning. He wasn't bragging. He was trying to point out that he was this is very much admitting. Should yeah. be doing this. The richest right. ones making the war and they're winning. Uh, yeah. All and right. He's not wrong. <laughs> No, Ooh, no. All right, Poncho. Uh, last question. You're this welcome. is uh this is a doozy. Uh oh. Are you ready? <laughs> Lay it on me. All right. Hit me. Either Not right. vice presidential candidate Tim Waltz got his stomach pumped after a neighborhood dare gone wrong. He ended up with horse semen in his in his stomach. Was that fact check? <laughs> or people are buying and carrying JD Vance family kit sperm cups at Oh my god. MAGA rallies. Oh my god. I've oh wow. Wow. Cups with his okay. face on it, they say. Question. When <laughs> JD Vance full family. Uh, yeah, I, I totally Oh you don't you don't need a visual sadly, on the sper- sperm I cup? believe that. I don't even I don't even need to fact check that one. I just believe it outright. You just believe it, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Walls, how old yeah. was he when this happened? This would have been nineteen ninety five, so he would have been in his thirties, okay. late thirties. 30 years ago. Okay. Okay. Was he aware of what he was ingesting? Yeah, it was a dare. It was a dare. Okay. So they did, they dared him. He knew what it was. Yeah. Oh, 
that's just too funny. And he had to, why did he have to get his stomach pumped? Because it's horse semen or was there like a reaction or something? Yes, medical experts warned that that it could lead to health complications and mess up his gastrointestinal okay. tract. It was like, dude, uh, that was stupid. He he, he was he pumped. he started getting stomach okay. aches, abdominal distress, and they uh, called, made a call, okay. and okay. and they were like, yeah, you should come in and get your okay. stomach. Okay, okay. I'm gonna say that that was fact checked. The Tim Walz story. Tim. Yeah, the Tim Wall story is the fact-checked story. That is correct. Now, for bonus points, was it true, false, or mixed? I'm going to say mixed. I'm going to say mixed. No, Amber, that was straight up false. That was straight up false. Never happened. It's fake news. I thought maybe there was a dare, but it wasn't horse semen. Right, right. It was like, eat all these wings. And he's like, okay. No, no, somebody yeah, yeah, that made would a be fake, more believable. That's they faded, so funny. made a fake newspaper article from 1995 and ha- it's been going around. Love the it. Um, Love the, it. Because if they have to make up shit, that means that they can't find shit. Right. I love While that. the JD Vance full family kit sperm cups are indeed being seen at rallies. Oh, people, absolutely. Like, I didn't doubt it for a shared. second. Yeah. That's yeah. so ridiculous. Well done <laughs> on a shutout. It. Three for three. Poncho, Woo-hoo! you are getting you're getting some extra treats tonight, Watch out, buddy. Ron the geologist, apologist. I'm coming right. for your title. That's right. <laughs> all right, everybody. We hope you had a good time. Maybe learned a thing or Woo-hoo! two. I know I did. We encourage you to reach out to us all always. Right. You know, find you can find us, have cocktails at gmail.com. Send us a message, 443-499-8253. Fantastic. All right. Till next time, Perfect. keep your facts straight. It's time to talk about some feel good news. Woo-hoo! Yes. Yes. I mean, I'm already feeling good now because I just. Okay, so fantastic, fantastic news. Thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, which passed in the Senate after a tie-breaking vote that Kamala Harris passed the tie-breaking vote on, because that's a big part of what the vice president does, Mm -hmm. breaks a tie in the Senate. Um, Mm -hmm. That act passed, and they just finished renegotiating drug prices for the Medicare system. Ooh. Um, it's not only it's it's going to save one and a half billion dollars in out of pocket costs for seniors, just alone. Wow. And on top of that, the Medicare system is going to save about six billion dollars in those drug prices over the next year. Fantastic! It's such a big it's win. About time. Uh, yeah, yeah. For example, a Medicare person who takes Stelara for arthritis, they pay mm-hmm. right now three thousand four hundred and sixty dollars for a thirty day supply. Oh. Fuck. Now, once this goes into effect, they're only going to pay a thousand one hundred seventy-four dollars. Wow! I mean, still fuck, but wow, that's a huge so, change. Countries, and this is this is a big reason why we don't have a uh, uh, socialized Medicare medicine in this country is we've got mm-hmm. all of these drug companies and healthcare companies that are going to lose mm-hmm. a lot of their profit. They're going to lose a lot of their profit. We right. see all these other, these same drug companies will sell these drugs for less in Europe and Canada. We know that. We know that. They're already doing it. They just make less money. But they're so fucking greedy. Right. That the government actually has to yeah. force them through these negotiations to be like, no, right? we're not going to pay that much for that drug anymore. Okay, fine. Absolutely we'll make does. less money. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the biggest That's in your face thing, example. Is yeah. Yeah, it's all corporate greed. Like, they don't need to be pricing these drugs as high as they do. I mean, I understand, like, the drug is new. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just just upsetting, especially when it's life-saving drugs, like insulin. You know, something that you're not going to live 
if you don't get it. And the fact that they can charge jacked up prices because they know people have to buy it is so morally repulsive. That's that's exactly what Farmer Bro did. He brought I think he did almost did a service yeah. by being so evil because he brought it to light. He bought a drug company yeah. that owned the yeah. patent to a life saving drug and was like, Well, if they want to save their lives, yeah, they'll they'll pay eight times as much. And he just <laughs> jacked up the price. He's like, I own the drug. It's absolutely what disgusting. Are they gonna do? Yeah. Right. For profit healthcare is not yeah, good in my don't... opinion. It's not good for society. No. It's not good for healthcare. It's not good for it's people. It's not. It's so wrong. But hey, yeah. we're making progress. Thank you, Kamala Harris and the rest of our you know, representatives for actually representing us. We're Woo-hoo! actually trying to help us. Yeah, fantastic. All mm-hmm. of these these drugs uh, going going down. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. the different uh, Flasp, Flex Touch, Penfill, Novolog, diabetes treatment stuff. I'm looking at the chart here. Yeah. Um, 785,000 Medicare enrollees who used the used it in 2023 mm-hmm. for a 30 day supplies 500 bucks and starting in 2026 these new negotiated rates it's going to be 119 wow uh, 76% savings with diabetic drugs 66% savings uh for Stellara for psoriasis and arthritis and Crohn's disease uh 38% savings on Imbruvica for blood cancer uh, different kind of arith- wow. psori- uh, arthritis drug, Enbril, 67% savings. It's just big, huge cuts. Uh, huge I, for one, cuts. am really, really, really happy to see this. Uh, for anything sure. that gets us a step, step closer right direction. To, to people mm-hmm. getting the drugs they need is, is just beautiful. And, and not Absolutely. bankrupting them. Go, GoFundMe shouldn't be At doing most decent, of our health costs. Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. No. Boy, can you imagine if some of those richest people in our country actually just, you know, bought people's medications? They wouldn't even see their money go away. They they wouldn't even know that they don't have that one billion but out of seven hundred billion. How now. else are they gonna feel special? Oh well. Without their money. Oh well, I mean, they could yeah. still feel special for helping people. That's easy for you but to say. Anyway, <laughs> you don't have any money. You're not <laughs> special. It is very true. <laughs> and right, I have even folks. less after moving this weekend. <laughs> right, right. Speaking all right, of all right. Moving. All right. Sadly, like all good things, the show has to come to an end. Uh, before we Aww. go, I'd like to thank Happy Fun Ball. Do not taunt yes, Happy thank Fun you. Ball. <laughs> if Happy Fumball begins to smoke, please seek shelter and cover your head with your arms. Mm-hmm. 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 Looks like we don't have any time left for that easy trick florists use to get out of parking tickets that makes cops so furious they shake their fists at the sky and say, why? Sorry, folks, that's on me uh, that we don't have that time. Uh, I do need to give a quick shout out to science, congeniality, and the social contract. Things that just make have been making society Huzzah. better than anarchy for many of the last thousands of years. Uh, Amber, any final words, thoughts, or phrases before we say goodbye today? Oh, um, yes, don't get struck by lightning. Yeah, I heard that's what killed Genghis Khan. That's my advice for the week. Yeah. I know, I mean, (laughs) it's, it's a true story. Have a wonderful day, everybody. If you had a good time with us, you know what to do. Tell somebody that uh, you think would have fun hanging out with us. Uh, you can find us over at halfcocktails.com. We're on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. If you're in a giving mood, come show some love over at thehalfcocktails.com slash shop. All sorts of amazing, awesome brand yep. merchandise. We also have a Patreon set up. We'll have all those links in the episode description. But for now, thanks for stopping by and go out and be well. Now things are ending. It's time to go. No more to get through, thanks for listening, that's our show. Ain't affectation, oh, we're just leaving you half cocked. Half cocked, half cocked. We had a good time talking today, but even best times eventually they fade away. 
exaggeration, we're just leaving half-cut.